Hello guys. Hello guys. My name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Fortran programming. Now in the last tutorial we saw this fun program. We were working on this program where when we saw the uh, the usage of reshape function, reshape, reshape function, pack function and uh, how to, you know, use these to slice variables, slice mat slice uh, entries in uh, certain two dimensional matrix. Now uh, we will we'll be continuing on that and as promised I will tell you guys uh, as to how the array indexing works in Fortran. Now before go going to array indexing I will just start of you know letting you guys a small note ok. Now when we pre when we you know uh, let me just comment this out ok. See when we r wrote our program the last time and we printed all the results ok it came kind of haphazard haphazardly. Uh, it came a little haphazardly, and not so nice. Uh, for instance, if I were to compile, build, and execute this, this is how we got. Okay. Now, uh, what I fact, uh, I mean, this kind of an arrangement uh, will not be, you know, pleasing or uh, easy to uh, easy to visualize, especially if you're, you know, working with matrices. Maybe if it's a list of numbers or something, uh, this might work. But if you want to visualize matrices you know in that uh, i comma j position and all this kind of uh, uh, formatting display will not be nice it not it will not be you no know, appealing or you know it will make any it will make any sense so what i did is that uh, i'm using i'm using the right right command i'm using the right command to do all the process now what i can do is that uh, only the top part of top portion of it if you guys notice i have introduced I am using the write command to print the same statement, same value uh, on the screen. What I can do is that uh, in the, since I'm not this write command can be used to uh, display things on the screen also with a small okay, and it it also has the function. It also behaves like uh, you know print in that regard. Okay, now how do we do that? How to use write to print on the screen? Simple. In from the first portion where it has to be where you have to mention the unit number or the file number where we are processing this keep this as a star indicating that is unspecified in the formatting part okay instead of specifying a specific format you can write the format like this or you can separately write the format and indicate over here using the FM, fmt parameter okay and then you can use this advanced uh, parameter available in write function to uh, write function to you know display it as display it as it is. Suppose if I were to give advance equals yes. Now if I were to compile build and execute this, perfect. Now if with this yes, it is just printing. Uh, it is just printing just like how a print statement uh, executed. Now if I give advance equals no, watch. If I give advance equals no, it will just uh, compile build and execute this. It is completely haphazardous. Haphazard. Now, but there is an advantage. What I'm doing is that uh, I'll comment this out. Comment this out. And if you guys remember, this and this and is used for you know continue extending the previous line in, mul in multiple lines. Okay. Now, what I can do is that I can make this simple to make it look like a matrix. Uh, right function. The right function as it is, or right command as it is with no specified formatting for the file no specified file we are just specifying the format and in this format what I am doing is that I am creating a field of 8 8 characters long in that uh, 3 significant digits for 3 uh, three spaces for the significant digits there is a dot, the sign and everything uh, and all the numbers uh, real, and all the numbers of the real number part takes 8 take the remaining part ok and then I give this command called as advance parameter advanced colors no if I were to give this advanced command okay now what will happen if I were to compile build and execute this okay it will just continues to print on the same line again and again and again and again okay it will what will do it just uh, it will just uh, print a value it will just print it will just print a value okay give a tab give a small tabbing uh, this tabbing of three units is actually given by this T3. T stands for tabbing and it, it three means three spaces. So T3 means you are giving a tab of three units like that. Okay, simple as that. Now it will leave three spaces 
and then print the next number three spaces and the next number and so on now this it's fine now if i were to make this work like uh, work like uh, work like uh, you know look like a matrix properly what i can do is that i can write a command uh, this write command uh, with no format and no format with no file and no format and no variables passed just a plain write form plain write function we have to compile build and execute this perfect now we look now this is looking like a matrix now this is looking like a proper matrix two dimensional matrix to visualize now this looks fine okay now instead of this one instead of this option you can also use this uh, command call as I mean or a function call as new underscore line now what is the new underscore line is that it just needs it just needs some parameter inside and it will leave a blank line simple as that if you have to compile this and build this and run this you see this extra blank line below between the rows this is because of this new line function new line function now if i were to ins instead of c if i were to you know replace by c instead of this a if i were to replace by c let's see how this works nothing all it needs is just a ca character all it needs is just a character suppose if i were to print a a since it's a two dimensional character now watch nothing all it needs is just a character and simple as that and uh, this can be used but for our for, uh, for our pu purposes this write will do uh if i were to run, run this now this looks proper now implementing the same logic here okay uh same logic here compile building and running this yeah this looks nice now all you have to do is that write a print state write a statement at the top saying print the matrix is let me just copy this paste it here the the sliced matrix is like this and compile building and executing yeah perfect now this now this looks more pleasing enough now remember these remember these things guys because in the next tutorial we will be looking at in the coming upcoming tutorial we will be looking at this a little more in detail now let's let i let, i'll mention you guys about uh, the most important topic in this tutorial the uh, the index array indexing format see in uh, i'll you know make some notes here let me just you know bring this down bring this down see uh, in fortran the array indexing is actually uh, column column based what does this mean what does this mean is that the in, in numbers the uh, scanning of the values go in num go along the columns i'll explain you guys what this means suppose if you have a matrix a equal uh, suppose if you have a matrix a okay whose values are you know 1 2 3 let's say now what what uh, usually uh, programs will read them will uh, now this matrix in memory will be stored like this 1 comma 2 usually 3 comma 4 this is this is how row based storing looks like this is how row based storing looks like what will happen is that the uh, in com in a program in a computer whenever an array is stored whenever an array is stored it is stored in a continuous manner in such that uh, such that the uh, the, uh, the storing goes serially along the row so in the first row the first element will be stored in the first uh, first time memory location and then the second value will be stored and go still all the values in the first row again and next after the first row ends it will go to the second row and it prints a save the first uh, first uh, column value then the second column value and the third column value like that and so on okay so this is how a row based storing works like whereas in fortran okay how it will store is it will go along the column Three, so it will be. So it will be like first it will store one, and then it will go to column three, and then it will go to uh, sorry, and then go to row two, and then it will go to second column. It'll read the first uh, value in the first row, and then the second column value in third uh, value in the second row. So this so in Fortran 
this will be stored uh, this matrix if you want a matrix like this this is how it will be stored so this is column based storage column based storing or uh, column based storing or column based uh, storage whichever you call it some people you know sometimes call this row contain this is called as row contingency or uh, row continuous storage or this is called as uh, you know column conti contiguous storage example of this is c c c plus plus matlab and several other programs by default use row contingency row con row based contingency or uh, row based storing whereas fortran uses is column based storage so this will be a sometimes very annoying for many people so this has to be you know taken into consideration especially when you're uh, working into a large number of matrices this is how it has, has to be done so so the array indexing uh, so that uh, the read if you have a matrix let's say like let's say like this okay now remember you know, just keep this in mind now let's uh, you know break the, break this apart and work now this mat in this way what if you give a value like this okay on the top like this okay mat 1 comma 1 will be occupied first and that will be given a value 1 okay whereas uh, in the next element 4 okay that will go into 2 comma 1 it will not go by it, it this will not be stored by row wise it will be stored column wise so so in the uh, so in the first column the second row uh, element will be filled with 4 like that mat next the 7 will be printed will be stored in the third column of the first th sorry third row of the first column and that this will be 7 similarly similarly since this ma this row is o this column is over now it will go to the second column okay now second column first row so the second column is uh, second column and first row now this will be equal to 2 this value here and then mat 1 comma uh, yeah 1 uh, no, sorry this is 2 comma 2 column remains co column number remains constant till the end of the, till the end of all the rows and then 2 followed by 5 then mat 3 comma 2 uh, this will be 8 and you know I think you got the point okay now this is how the mat no, this is how the mat uh, mattresses this is how the memory contingency is stored whereas this is how it's this is how it will be present how the memory will be in the memory in Fortran in Fortran arrays okay okay in this Fortran array the storage is like this will be like the storage will be like this matrix 1 comma 1 followed by matrix 2 comma 1 followed by mat uh, no matrix 3 comma 1 and then matrix 1 comma 2 yeah, 1 comma 2 and so on this is how the values will be stored in the memory and this and this is actually very advanced this is this kind of a formatting is a little pick is a little annoying because like this might be slightly annoying because in uh, many of the programs set uh, programming languages people use uh, the, uh, it's more of row and row based storing so that will be easy to comprehend this is a little column based storing which is slightly which is slightly an uh, odd way to do but uh, this is something you have to keep in mind for a three dimensional array let's say for a 3d array okay the order will be something like this memory storage order will be 1 comma 1 comma 1 and then mat mat 2 comma 1 comma 1 watch this and then if you guys guessed it right it will be 3 comma 1 comma 1 okay and then okay uh, mat 3 comma 2 comma 1 so, uh, let's see uh, let's see uh, did I do this right yeah 3 comma 2 comma uh, 
sorry this is again 1 1 comma 2 comma 1 <coughs> and then mat uh, 1 comma 2 comma 2 sorry sorry uh, 2 comma 2 comma 2 comma 1 and then mat uh, 3 3 comma 2 comma 1 and so on the next value will be uh, the next value will be 1 comma 3 comma 1 and then 1 comma 3 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 comma 3 like that okay this is how a matrix store and similarly if you store a four dimensional array uh, it will be stored from the end it will be stored from the left end not like the right end now this is the reason why we chose a matrix like this suppose if we were to give this matrix to be 2 3 4 5 6 and this is 7 and this is 8 suppose we were to give this in the natural conventional method we run this the matrix will be like this now this is this is a clear cut indication this is a clear cut indication of how the matrices get stored matrix values get stored one goes to the first uh, first row first column second goes to the second row first column third goes to the third row first column and then it gets filled now this is how it's get filled this is getting filled column wise not like not in the row wise this is uh, this is another illustration to show that uh, the matrices in uh, two dimensional matrices and even though uh, they get filled column wise in fortran now uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial say see uh, in the next tutorial uh, we'll be using this program we'll be using the principles that we learned in this program to uh, to gen to do some uh, to do uh, to develop a subroutine and they uh, that's the uh, they calculate the determinant of a pro determinant of a matrix and then this function uh, will be used for this subroutine and stuff will be used for uh, will be used extensively uh, for uh, for another application that will be coming soon that will be coming little, in a little while later okay that's uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial thank you guys for watching see you guys next time bye